So you've got a furnished holiday let or service accommodation and you want to claim capital allowances. Can you do it and will it save you tax? Well, that's a great question. It's something that we posed to Jake Ills in this video. So go check this out. Uh, do capital allowances work for service accommodation? Now, this this would be an interesting because I think we can have a good laugh about this, Jay. Um, I can see you twitching already, Jay. Twitching. Is, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. so I've, got, I've got some wine, so you're right. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in a mug as well, just to, to, to conceal conceal the evidence. Uh, so if I buy a terrace house, for example, refurb it, and then put it to a service accommodation mortgage, can I claim capital assets? I forget that it's a, a, a terrace house. It's, it's service accommodation. There is a huge, I mean, the, the, the capital allowances world doesn't even acknowledge service accommodation, does it? It's holiday let. Yeah, uh, I suppose there's there's a massive question, and you're right that I probably I probably twitch quite a bit at this sort of thing. But I think ultimately you've got you've got you've got a very very few key points. So in the main, capital allowances are not allowable for residential properties and ASTs, which is why the revenue don't really like HMOs um, because of because of because of that because they just they think you just they just think it's a house share. And if you think the way what the revenue is up to and what they're trying to do, there's two trillion pounds worth of government debt. Any sort of real excuse to sort of <laughs> take that and not give that money, then it's interesting. So they are on record as denying so sort of claims. So there's a there's a, a whiff of we don't like residential in the marketplace, if you like, from, from, from that perspective. So when you buy a terraced house, yes, you are buying a residential property in the main, but you could be buying that terraced house that has already been operated as a a holiday let already so there are some complications so it is a big it is a big it is a, bit, a much bigger question than you think so I, if i take it take it apart into two parts service accommodation yeah you're right the revenue doesn't recognize or there is no sort of formal consideration for service accommodation in the legislation so let's let's sort of unpick that what does that mean uh service accommodation in real terms would be something like a b and b in a hotel is how it would be interpreted by by the revenue a furnished holiday let that satisfies the three criteria of the 210 days 105 uh, 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 and then 31 in, in 155 if you satisfy those criteria then you have a furnished holiday let business so in sum if you're buying a terrace house from somebody that's just selling it as a residential property that's fine and you can refurbish it uh, and you can then then you can claim capital allowances when you are trading Perfect. And something I recommend to a lot of our clients and all of you listeners and watchers out there, if you're not certain you understand the criteria that Jake's just described, go Google Help Sheet 253. That's Help Sheet 253 from HMRC. And it's a superb summary of the key conditions and the key hoops you're going to have to jump through if you're going to prove that the asset you are utilising truly meets the furnished holiday let standards and therefore can have capital allowance as supply. So do go and look at that help sheet 253. There you go. Just one other thing on that, if you don't mind, is just mm -hmm. the, interestingly, the, the, uh, I was chatting through with the team today about thinking this might sort of come up, I guess, is that if you have already have a property business, then you can claim for capital allowances from the offset, potentially, here. Okay. If you don't have a property business as an SPV, you can't claim for capital allowances from the offset. So I'm hearing some whiffs from some of the property networks and the and the pens and everything else that people have been told, yes, just buy an SPV, you can go and off you go. The reality is you can't claim if you've got an SPV until you're trading. Uh, but if you have got a property business already, then you can claim. And then basically you're then claiming for when you buy. And then as you rip out, but there's some things left, you claim with what's left. And then you can claim with what you're replacing as well. So it doesn't sound so bad. It's actually very positive. It's just that it's just a timing issue that SPV, no, non-SPV already trading, say you've got a, a property business already and you can claim from the outset. Mm. 